engine update on everything going on. So the Bearhawk 5 sitting behind me, if you haven't seen those build videos and more on it, um, you can look look in some videos below. Um, so we have been waiting on an engine. I know a lot of you guys have asked what we're going for an engine. So the, the predicament here is that we need to make big horsepower, uh, but we're also doing it in the Sahara Desert and we have to run on auto fuel. So that, uh, that makes this a very, very difficult project. Wow, that is really hard. Um, so, we were working with a company um, that was, that is, they still currently are developing a water-cooled derivative of a line coming engine. Um, and so we placed an order with them about a year ago and uh, they're just, they're not quite there yet. And uh, we need to be flying and really I was hoping to have this airplane in Africa six months ago. So. What does that mean? All of a sudden I came up needing an engine and if you guys have tried to order an engine right now, I don't have a year to two years to wait like a lot of places are quoting you. And so uh, what ended up happening is we found an engine uh, actually sitting in Norman, Oklahoma about a half, half hour from me. And what it was is uh, if you guys are familiar with Turbo Commander, I'll shoot a picture up of those. Um, so Turbo Commander makes uh, fantastic airplanes, but they were recently bought by a company in China. China, 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 China. The name of the game here is give this air, this engine every opportunity it possibly can to run well on auto fuel for us. And so there's a couple of things we're doing. We are changing some horsepower and we're going up. Uh, yeah, dude, go ahead. More power, baby. Yeah. Uh, with a cold air induction and uh, exhaust system and our injection system. And so this engine should make somewhere between 290 and 300 horse. Um, and so what we need to do is keep cylinder temperatures way, way low. So there's a lot of things we're doing on baffling and induction system on the airplane to get that, but we're also doing things to the engine. So if you can see, let me kick a light on for you guys. You can see right here, there's a little socket head plug. There's one right there. So at every cylinder, there's one of those plugs. And what that is for the high horsepower models, um, where you're doing turbos and high compression and things like that, they put a little piston oil squirter right there. And so let me uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So you basically pull that socket out and then you put one of these. And so what this is, you can see a little hole in it, is it basically under 40 PSI it closes, over 50 PSI it starts shooting oil onto the back sides of the pistons. And so it lowers your piston temperature and ultimately lowers your CHTs. So the downside to this is it does technically raise your oil temperatures because it's pulling heat out of the piston and putting it into the oil. And so we are putting in a giant oil cooling system um, that should be more than adequate to take care of one, the heat that we already have, but two, the heat that's created by these little squirters. So basically all we have to do is run those, uh, uh, run those Allen sockets out and then we can put one of these squirters in for each cylinder. Okay, so we've got all the jugs on again in the left and right side. So when you pull all of these off, you can see I've just got like one nut holding these on right now, um, one on each side. And so whenever you pull an entire side off of an engine like that, you can't just go crazy torquing all the bolts. There's a specific, um, specific torque spec for each nut, um, big ones versus little ones and all that kind of fun stuff. And then there's also, uh, if you start here, go here, go here. Um, you can't just start tightening randomly. Um, and so whenever you do one of these, if you guys do pull a full side off for a top overhaul or whatever it may be, or you're putting a motor together, pull your pull your light coming manuals and it'll tell you exactly what your torque specs are. And there's, there's initial torque and final torque and all that kind of stuff. So uh, just a little caution, this isn't a, this isn't a how to video, but uh, look up your manuals and use them, it'll help you out. 
All right, so motor's hung. I'm gonna give you guys a little quick rundown on what we've got going on here. Um, and then uh, we'll move on from there. So uh, this is the engine you saw us building, IO540. Uh, started as a uh, motor out of an Aero Commander. It was set for an Aero Commander. It was factory pickled and uh, sitting in a crate. So only thing different on the motor itself is I did add piston oil squirters. The purpose there is to help keep cylinder temps and piston temps down because we're running on auto fuel. So we've got those. We've got a Betterman exhaust um, built by Clint Betterman. Uh, we are straight piped with heat muffs. Um, again, reason for that is um, a straight pipe motor essentially runs cooler than a uh, muffler. Yeah, it'll it'll be loud, but um, that's what good headsets are for. Sorry, I freaked you guys out. Ah! It's so loud. So we've got that. Um, down on the bottom here, we've got a Barrett uh, cold air intake. So that swaps it to forward induction. Um, and that actually adds a little bit of horsepower, mainly um, not so much the cold air part of it, because really the, the old Lycoming sumps where you got the spider going through the oil um, pan, I'll show you that. Um, they really don't heat the air up that much. The air is in those for just a split second before it's into the cylinder, but these Barrett intakes flow air a lot better, and so you actually do make more horsepower on them. So, got that Barrett intake on the bottom, and then EFI injectors, and uh, that's about it. This is a Vans RV10 uh, baffling kit, so if you're building anything with a 540 in it, Vans makes a great baffling kit that uh, is almost complete. It's got all the parts you need, and then you can modify it into whatever you want. So, on the top, I built a carbon fiber plenum. Um, so we did plenum the whole thing. Um, again, that's just some cooling stuff. And uh, that's about it. We're dual alternators. So we've got an alternator down here on the front, belt driven, and then alternator on the rear uh, vacuum pad. So that's our backup alternator. Both of them are 60 amp alternators. Um, so we can run on either alternator. It really doesn't matter. Um, but that lets us, because we are electrically dependent, we now have dual battery, dual bus, dual alternator setup. Um, really that's overkill for most places, but because where we're flying, we could be two, three, four hours from an airport sometimes. Uh, that means that we need to have all the electrical power we need to get to the next airport. So um, to really have the, the prop stop turning, essentially you have to lose two alternators and two batteries uh, in the same flight. And that's not a very likely event. I mean, you gotta lose four things there before anything shuts off. So. Um, you know, in reality, reliability-wise, you're um, you're up there. I mean, you're just as reliable as mags, if not more reliable, because there's actually um, within the ignition system itself, there's no mechanical parts to wear out. There's nothing turning. There's nothing like that. You've just got coil packs and stuff like that. So that's the basic rundown on the motor. Um, it is a parallel valve. So this motor, uh, this motor came in at ride at 380 pounds, um, whereas the alternative motor for this. Um, would be an angle valve 540 or an angle valve 580. Uh, those respectively are at, an angle valve 580 is like 480 pounds. Um, so we're, we're 100 pounds lighter, but um, what the, the difference there is because this engine doesn't have mags or anything on it or injection system or any of that when it was weighed. So you're gonna pick some of that weight back up. It's just not gonna be on the motor itself. It's elsewhere in the airframe, so. Um, that's the rundown on the motor. Let me know what you guys think. Should be good. It, uh, if all the numbers are right, it should make somewhere between 290 and 300 horse. Um, so, should be plenty of engine for the airplane. Lightens it up a little bit and it lets us run on auto fuel. So, we're ready to rock and roll here soon. Let me know what you guys think and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.